Yeah, first of all, uh, a text question from you. All right, it's a good question, actually. Let's discuss it. Now, the question could be whether this is a, 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 a Basui convergent or, or, or condition convergent. Sometimes, you know, we ask this kind of question. All right, so how many uh, different ways to solve the problem, right? How many different ways to solve it? Right. Whenever you see n square, n cube, whatever is polynomial, ratio test, row test does not work. Only when you see exponential function, n factorial, this kind of strange number, bigger number, you can possibly can use that uh, a ratio to row test. Okay. Otherwise, the limit is always going to win. Inconclusive. Cannot get L the limit less than one or greater. Okay. Uh, this is alternating series. Automatically, you will think I'm by using alternating series test to prove it. Okay. So you try, you know, you, when I look at this, I think it's convergent. Not only convergent, but three convergent. Okay. This is an AN, right? AN. Why? When you ignore the negative sign, so you just drop the negative sign, right? Then, uh, then clearly this is going to be less than n and q, which is b n. Now sometimes you have to use the limit of compression test, but here, because if n cube minus one, then I cannot say less than equal to make sure you know the equality. Yeah. So, but then you still can drop negative one if if a plus one is changed to negative one. In that case, you have to use. Uh, uh, limit the compression test because you cannot just easily say it's less than equal to bn. bn is one of n square, right? And clearly, uh, bn is convergent. Why it's convergent? By p-series test, right? By the p-series test. Okay, p is going to be two, greater than one. Then you cannot say n is convergent. Sigma. A. You have to say this this series because when you apply the compression test, you only apply compression test to series with positive terms. But that's okay. This is a convergent. You have to say that. Don't skip that part. By the compression test. Sometimes you have to use a limited compression test. Okay. Then you conclude that. Okay, this original with negative signs, right? This is absolutely convergent that, that by by the theorem in the in that section we don't have a name for that section uh, or for that particular name okay so but that's okay this is a uh, obvious okay so it's absolutely convergent that's the first method just because you have n cubed there but if I change n cubed to n square that method doesn't work but the series is clear convergent if I change n cube, okay. So my question is, uh, uh, when my question is, think about those two problems, okay. And here's n n cube minus one, so then have used from two. That's the first problem. Another problem is, if I change it to uh, change it to this problem, okay. So yeah, I'm not going to work on that. But think about this is a this. Yeah, there is a modification here, okay? So here you can use a limited compression test. You cannot use a compression test, okay? You can prove that this is absolutely convergent, okay? And this is the first one. This one is only, it's, a, it's only conditionally convergent. Why condition convergent? It's convergent, but it's not absolute convergent. Okay, and then you have to use the alternating theory test. 
Okay, so that's two problems. All right, uh, the second method, let me try and do this problem again. Since this is alternating series, so it's very natural to use alternating series test, but a little bit more complicated actually. So this is a BN. What do you have to do? If you use the alternating series test, you have to show two. One, BN is positive, okay, that's okay, it's not changing. And two, BN decreasing, C, BN converging to zero. I think this is obvious, that's obvious. Only the one in the middle, you have to verify, okay? So you look at the function f of x, 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 q, you have to find the derivative, which is negative. Then show this is a convergent, okay? All right, so find the derivative, it's not that complicated. You get x cubed plus one square, and here's a one, here's x cubed plus one, minus x times the derivative of x cubed plus one, three x squared. So after simplifying, you have one left, and one minus three is gonna be two, two x squared. I think it's clearly this negative for, for x squared and one, right? Because the numerator is negative, x squared, when x squared is equal to one, numerator is negative, it's obvious. Okay, so that implies f of x is decreasing on the interval on this interval. So this implies the bn, which is which is f of n. This is decreasing, okay, uh, right for n uh, for when greater than equal one. Then, then you can say that by then this series is convergent by the alternating series test. Okay, there are some, there are some uh, alternating series. You can prove the convergence using other uh, tests, not the alternating series test. Sometimes it's more challenge, more difficult to, to use alternating series test. For example, like this one. I just gave you a lot of problem here. Here's n to the three. If you want to use alternate series test to prove its convergence, you have to find a derivative, you have to figure out when the derivative is negative, right? It's complicated, you have to find a derivative. Sometimes I make a function more complicated. You know, I, I can even, yeah, I can even put n squared here and I just make it more complicated to, for you to figure it out if I don't want you to use alternate series. Sometimes I do, I don't want to use the alternate series test. So I make it more complicated, so let it to make it impossible to figure out when the derivative is negative. It's harder, okay? Like this, you cannot use alternative series test, okay? Uh, what is the best way to solve this problem? Yeah, right, you see, see, got an A, no, kidding. Okay. <laughs> ratio test, yes, the best, you know, there are the tests you can use, but the best way is the ratio test. Okay, you know why? I already said that at the very beginning, when you see two to the AI, that's right. Load test it doesn't work, it's more complicated, okay? Because I have added n squared there. So let's use a ratio test, okay? So ratio test is going to be a little bit complicated, right? Okay? It's n plus one, two to the n plus one plus n plus one square. Okay, it's not negative sign, it's gone, so it's two to the n plus n square. So I needed to simplify it. What I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, let's let me write down one more terms, okay? Okay. So I'm going to I want I want to regroup with them. So n plus one over n, that's that is one part. And then I have a two n plus n square, two n plus one plus n plus one square. So I'm going to take a two n out from each of them. Okay. If two n, uh, if you take two n out, the denominator is going to be n square over two to the n, right? And this one will be two plus n plus one square over two to the n, right? Divided by numerator, and clearly this goes to one, one plus zero, two plus zero, which is one half, which is this. 
because n squared polynomial, polynomial over exponential functions always approach a zero, okay? Yeah, any polynomial in the numerator, okay? So in, this is two to the n, you know, any polynomial in, in power cube, it doesn't matter. So, so square plus, you know, plus two n plus one approaches zero, okay? As n approaches infinity. So this is a, this is the best way. But if you use a alternate theory test, it's harder to prove it's decreasing, okay? And can you use a ratio test? It's possible. You can use a ratio test. Uh, that's it's it's difficult. You know, a comparison test. Okay, a little bit difficult to estimate because there's the n in the numerator. There's n in the numerator. Okay. Yeah. If you use a ratio test, uh, let's go back. How do you? I use a use a comparison test. Yeah. So this is a. a yeah, what we have here, n, yeah, n, right? So n two to the n plus n square, right? So uh, absolute value n is going to be n two to the n plus n square. I know the dot as a term dominant rest on this two to the n, but uh, how can I uh, how can I get rid of that, right? It's a uh, it it requires uh, uh, yeah, it requires uh, uh, the mathematics, right? So easiest way is you just drop this, drop the n square. But still there's n there in the numerator. There's n there in the numerator, right? And uh, that's n in the numerator. Now the quick, the easy way to do is we try to get a geometry series, okay? Uh, you can, there are a couple ways to do it. Either two to n is the greater than n cubed for sufficient large n, use this in quality, okay? Or you can use this in quality, like something like that, smaller than one, smaller than two, uh, a square, uh, not to the nth power. But either way, uh, but there's a second way, is a little bit more uh, difficult from it, yeah. Okay, so but the first one, if you use the first one for larger n, I think when n is going to be uh, three, uh, no, and uh, four, five, 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 yeah, should be the same quality hold. So actually, this is going to be uh, n and q, then you get n squared, then you get this is uh, the one you can choose. Okay, so we know that exponential function grows faster than polynomial. So for sufficient larger n, this in quality definitely holds. Okay, but uh, we don't we don't need to know exactly where. Okay, for what n, uh, you can I can I can safely say n greater than equal ten. That's no problem. <laughs> Just pick up a larger number. Okay, why? Because two to the two to the ten is much larger than ten cubed. Two to the ten, yeah. Ten cubed is one thousand only, right? Two to the cube, two to the ten. Uh, definitely it's larger than uh, 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 1,000, yeah. Okay, so this is true. Then by the by the comparison test, you can prove this is a convergent, absolute convergent, okay? Okay, so you can say that it is absolutely convergent by, by the comparison test, okay? Uh, Yes. All right. Any other questions? You know, my main concern is uh, on the on the convergence divergence problem. Yes. So this is about uh, uh, power series, okay? You're given, you're given this power series. We want to know whether it's a good So there's uh, two questions again. There are two questions. One is about radius convergence. 
And then you have to look at the end points, so it determines the interval of convergence. So, yeah. So you see that, uh, just consider x minus 3 as a number, right? So now you have a exponential, uh, exponential function here, right? Something to the power n. You also have n factorial. So first of all, if you don't see n factorial, maybe you can use ratio test or the rotor test. But when you see n factorial, you cannot use the road test because the nth root of n factorial, we don't know. Okay, so you have the only method you can use this ratio test. Okay, so this is a your n, and then you look at when, you know, yeah, then you look at this limit, okay, when it's less than one, when it's greater than one. Okay, so now you will get the numerate here, three to the n plus one. Be careful when you simplify. Uh, uh, when simplifying the expression like this, okay, there are some students who write, write the expression not very clearly. So when you simplify some terms you don't see, then you, you, you make mistakes. Then you see that, right? Then you get to the wrong answer. So, so sometimes compare different conclusion in a way it's divergent and you claim it's convergent. All right, the first step, don't skip a step, right? You have to move this to the side. And uh, x minus three, here's n plus one. You copy all the terms, and this will be a turn upside down, okay? Then you group the alike terms, three with three, right? So three with three n factorial with n plus one factorial and i just i don't want to skip with some steps here right then you simplify so the first time it gave you one third if you don't skip with those steps it's easy to check and n factorial over n plus one factor is n plus one and and this will be just x minus three so clearly no matter what you choose n goes to infinity, this goes to zero, right? So that means <laughs> the limit is always equal to zero. And that means doesn't matter, uh, doesn't ma uh, does, uh, yeah, no matter what you choose for the, for the x, it's always less than one, that's absolute convergent. So this series is absolute convergent for any x, okay? So this series is absolutely convergent Okay, by the ratio test and for any choice of x, right? So then it's clear, right? For any choice, the radius of convergence R is infinity, okay? The radius convergence is going to be infinity and the interval of convergence is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the whole line. Uh, So I posted some uh, uh, reviews, past reviews, okay, those are very similar problems. So my suggestion is if you have a time, you know, you don't have, maybe you don't have time to read the whole book, but if you have time, just look at those uh, uh, review problems, you know, we reviewed in the past semester. And don't read the solution. You have to cover it and do it by yourself. But the good part is you have a solution there. And so you can compare, you can look at, Okay, uh, convergence, yeah, convergence, there are, you know, usually you just use a ratio test, so don't, you don't have any problem, right? For example, uh, such as, yeah, this is gonna be uh, one, and uh, then have an, 
right? And uh, this will be x minus one to that power n, and it divided by, I don't have n factorial, but this is going to be, uh, I put any numbers here, you know, like a five to the n, okay? My question is, when it's converted, now the difficult part is, the difficult part is, what is the sum? <laughs> right, yeah, it's not easy to find out. Right, it's not easy to find out. Yeah, how to find the sum. Okay. Yeah. If we have to ha ask to find the sum, then must be the bonus problem. Okay, find the element function. Uh, uh, which gives you this, okay? Uh, <coughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, let me look at the first one. To find the sum, uh, let's just let's look look at the, uh, no, I'm not gonna use X, just use uh, uh, UV, uh, any other numbers, double N, okay? But this looks familiar, right? So I'm multi, I pri, uh, how can I get n here, right? How can I get n? If you differentiate, if you differentiate this, uh, this, right? If you differentiate this, this is gonna be uh, one over one plus w, right? Right? Yeah, when you differentiate this, you will get n w n minus one. And this is gonna be one minus w squared when you differentiate, okay? So it's very close, right? Then what you do is you multiply both sides by w, and w over one minus w squared. Okay, cool. Okay, so now you apply this to the above, uh, uh, problem and then mm -hmm. n equals one and and x minus one to the n uh five to the n can be written in the form n x minus one five right and this is w and then it's going to be x minus five over five one minus x minus one over okay so that function <laughs> After simplify, the power series is going to be the one on the left. All right, so you can find uh, the the elementary function represented by this power series. Okay, in some cases. Okay, but how about the convergence? You can directly work on this when it's convergent, when when x minus one over five, but the value is less than one. But you can also solve that problem. Uh, directly using the nth row test and uh, 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 yeah, and ratio test. Okay, so so the nth row test. So this case, I can use a row test, nth row uh, row test, just because because there's no n factory there. Okay, so what I'm going to get is this. Now, you must memorize what is the limit of this. If you want to use a rotor test, very often you're going to see n root of n, okay? There are some students do not remember this before took the lead test number two, okay? I said that many times you have to use this, it's gonna be one, not the infinity. That's why if you use a road test, you don't know this, and this shows up in the numerator, what do you see? Infinity over two, then it's infinity, therefore it's divergent, right? And you, you will lose lots of points, okay? okay? Uh, so it's better to change it to the road, uh, ratio test. The ratio test, you don't have this problem. You don't need to memorize the additional uh, limit, okay? If you use, yeah, so this is going to be, the limit is gonna be x, minus one over five, right? And then you see when it's a convergent, when it's divergent. 
but you can also use a ratio test and then you will get to it's going to be n plus one right and uh this is x mod uh, yeah after you simplify you get the same limit so you're not going to get a different limit okay x minus one to the n plus one five to the n plus one divided by n so after you simplify you will get a five of this and the clearly the limit is still x minus one plus the value and and divide by five so so this is going to be less than one and then it's absolute combined it's greater than one it's divergent so clearly uh yeah x minus one divided by five less than one it's equivalent to x minus one greater than five so the radius convergence uh yeah the radius convergence uh is going to be five okay and then you can also check whether it's converging. Then you can easily figure out the interval of convergence. All right. Let me repeat again. Okay. Remember, don't use the definition for the terror series to find the terror series. Repeat again. Okay, if you are watching my videos. <laughs> You know, I, when I was grading test two, more than half of students still refused to use my idea to use the power series to find the terraces. I said, you are not able to figure out the general formula for the derivative. When you differential went to rise, right? Can you find the general formula for the ends, ends on the derivative of a function? It's too complicated. You cannot ignore that part. Yeah, otherwise, you cannot get for for uh, for credit. Okay, so. Uh, if you have a function, right? You know, sometimes we ask you to find power series representation, and even that, there's still some students trying to find derivative to find power series representation. That's the wrong idea. We have to use the original result, okay? And this is a function. I just randomly pick a function. It could be log x, right? It could be, it could be, uh, uh, yeah, it could be um, polynomial, okay? So this will be like a two, you know, like a three x minus one. Uh, find the the Terra series at uh, I can say at a equals two. Okay. Right. I said that it would be a stupid idea to use a definition to find the terror series. You don't need to prove the convergence, but you still have to find the general formula. Okay, so the terror series, by uh, you, if you by the definition, this is going to be this. My question is, are you able to find the formula? If you don't feel confident, don't do that. You cannot just give me the first derivative, second derivative. I needed the general formula. I don't want you to write down those three terms. That's the incomplete answer. The power series representation. Okay, the infinite many terms that you have to describe all the terms. Okay, you can do that. You differentiate many times. You are able to do that. You know, but then I find out first of all, half of students you use the definition to find the series. Then, then only half of them, again, it's only 25%, get the derivatives correctly fine. Otherwise, when you differentiate, you make mistakes. Okay? So, so, yeah, how do you differentiate, right? It's going to be 2, 3x minus 1 to the negative power n. So you have to write down the general formula, right? 2, you know, 2 is always there. So, uh, it's going to be uh, it's negative one, right? So this is negative one. So it's negative one, three x. Don't multiply this out. If you multiply that, you don't see the logic pattern. Negative two and then times three, okay? Because differential is three x minus one. Then second derivative. The, the problem is that they are in bigger hurry to multiply them out. Then you don't see after you differential four times, you still don't see the pattern of the coefficients, okay? So then negative two. You see. 3x minus 1 negative 3 and 3 again a square, right? And the pattern shows up. 
okay? And the third times, two, negative one, negative two, negative three, three X minus one, two, negative four, and then again, another three, so three cube. So then you look at it, okay, here's a third derivative, then I have one, two, three, right? Here's a four, here's a three cube. So I believe that hence all the derivative is still two, and then negative one, negative two, all the way to negative n, then three X minus one to the negative n plus one, then three to the power n. So you have to write on this channel part. All right, then let's say here's a negative n, negative one to the power n and the two, then you have an n factorial, n factorial shows up. Then here's three to the power n, okay? Then you have a three x minus one to the negative n plus. So that is the general formula for the n sort of derivative. Okay, what do we have to find out? We have to find out f of f of two, right? So, so it's going to be negative n to two n factorial three to the power n two three times two six six minus one five. Okay, so that is a coefficient. Okay, then the Terra series is going to be. Uh, what is that? The Terra series is going to be f of n 2 over n factorial x minus 2, right? Power n. So I have to replace this, then n factorial will be cancelled out. If you really want to, uh, here's 2, here's 3 to the power n, and here's uh, 5 to the negative n plus 1, right? And then x minus 2 to the power n. Okay, this is a terra series. Okay. Don't just give it the first three terms. But that's not the best way to do it. It takes too much time, you see that? And it's easy on the way. It's easy to make mistakes. Right? So uh, the best way still to do it is because this function looks like this function. Right, and this holds for x less than one. Then just use that, modify the function and use that. Of course, it requires some algebraic skill to modify the function, but that's okay, right? So our function, I forgot my function. I don't have a memory, sorry. <laughs> so my function is two over three x minus one, okay? Yeah, so this is the function, so a is equals two, okay. It's surprising, I can memorize the ideas, but I cannot memorize the detailed expression functions after three seconds. <laughs> but probably you have the opposite way. You, you, you can memorize the formula, you don't memorize the idea, how to apply the formula. That's why you cannot do the problem sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead, so this is a, but the memory, there are not many I mean, ideas there, so it's easy to memorize the ideas. Okay, but there's them billions of functions there, right? Formulas, you know, too many. All right, so this is a, this is a function, right? So the idea is, I want to express, uh, express that as power series uh, around the two. So I let W to be X minus two, okay? then x is going to be w plus two, okay? So the function now becomes two, three, w plus two, be careful, be careful when you do the computation, right? So it's multiply that to three w plus three times two, six, six minus one, five. So then what I'm gonna do, right? I have to, I have to modify this function in that form, one minus some number, okay? When, where's the one? When should be coming from five? So I'm going to get five out. Then I get three W over five. Now I get a one, okay? So what? but it's not minus X, right? So I can change to minus, 
minus. Then I put a negative sign in front of 3w of 5. Then okay. That's it. Right? And then you apply the above formula. It's going to be negative 3 of w5 to the power n. Okay? And this holds when 3w over 5 less than 1. Okay? Because that is X, that, you know, in the place of X. Yeah. So now you can simplify to the power n, 2 over 5, 3n to the 5, 3n over 5n, and then w to the power n. w is x minus 2. And here, absolute w is less than 5 or 3. So you not only get to the Taylor series, you get more than we need. You said that the function is equal to that power series, the Taylor series. And for x satisfied, this is equal. Okay. So if you're able to do this problem, you can get 14 points from time is n. That make a difference from, from C to B. Okay. Okay. But if you still use the terrace, you use the definition of the terraces to find the terraces, you're going to lose points. You're not going to get 14 points. I'm pretty sure. You can try. <laughs> it's not easy to find. The, look at it. Right? It's not easy to find this general formula. You know, you're, you're training. Yeah. Still not good enough in general okay, to get the formulas. I, I saw some students attempted to do that. I forgot the n factor in the derivative. Then when you, when you put into the formula, the n factor is still there. <laughs> Because you did not get it. I don't know why I cannot figure it out. It's not easy to do that. Get the free figure out the general formula. Okay. And uh, yeah, most of students will miss that step. After you find the three derivatives, how to get jump to the nth <laughs> order derivative. Right? But if you multiply this out, like a negative two, negative three, it becomes already six. And you don't see it, you cannot see it. That's why we prefer not to multiply them out before I figure out the general formula in this order. Okay. Uh, any questions? Now, some habit you should have is when you apply some formula to some solve some problems, write down that formula completely before you started to find the derivatives. But I know you want the beginner to, to find it, right? You put your formula in your brain and you start to find the derivative first. Okay. So what happens that if you're trying to find a derivative and you, you maybe you stop, you know, find out oh, it's too much, too complicated, and then you switch and then move to the next problem. I'm right? never able to come back to the original problem. <laughs> then when the instructor look at the, look at the solution, even it's partial solution, but we can say it's not partial solution. Why? Because you're finding derivative. I'm asking you to find the length of the of the curve, right? And then I say, well, if you find the length of the curve, I have to find the derivative. But I don't know why. <laughs> you know, you did not say it. You did not tell me. This is a problem, right? And uh, and uh, and uh, you did not say that you have to find the derivative. Maybe I have a, another way. Without finding the derivative, I still can find the length, right? So you have to you have to step by step. It's a uh, you have to show, you know, you know how to solve the problem and write on the formula. Hey, I'm going to write the formula. Once you write on the formula, you're telling me, oh, you, you're going to use that formula to find the length. And the next step is just find the derivative. Okay? And, uh, and then you simplify. And maybe you're not able to evaluate the integral. In that case, Okay, if you do, if you do not ask you to set up an integral, we if we ask you to find the exact value of the lens, then you should be able to evaluate the if if your derivative is correct. You now sometimes you make mistakes. Okay, if you make mistakes. You cannot find uh, evaluate integral. Any other questions? Yes. No.
Okay, number two. Oh, this is about, uh, uh, yeah, the derivative. Okay, so this is a question, is find, uh, find uh, the point. Now, when we say the points, you have to use the two coordinates, okay? On, on the curve, y equals x squared e to the next x, okay? At which the tangent line is horizontal. Now, this function could be, uh, uh, the curve can be described by parametric questions, okay? Uh, uh, is horizontal. Okay, so you draw, uh, my suggestion to you is, you don't need to just sketch the graph, but just draw the curve, right? You did not draw it, okay? It's bad. Yeah, then you mark it, Okay, this is my understanding. The tangent line must be horizontal, <laughs> right? Yeah, you have to. It's better to draw a sketch a graph, but you don't need to, you know, just random draw. Okay, so this is a tangent line. So you are you are, you want to find the point uh, x and the y. You know, we can put dot here so that the tangent line is horizontal. Horizontal means the slope is zero. Okay, horizontal. Yeah, is equivalent to the slope is zero. And how do you find slope? Slope is a derivative. See, this is a this is how they express right the ideas. In your case, you jump to find the derivative. Okay, okay. If you stop there, you have <laughs> then you have to ask us how much you know how many credits to give to you. Right? Because why you have to find the derivative? I never learned that idea. You know, so you did not tell us the motivation to find the derivative. Clear? Yeah. Right now it's clear. Draw the picture here minus thing. Here's the curve, and the tangent line is horizontal. Here's the tangent. So horizontal really means slope is zero. Then you transfer the problem to find the derivative. And the slope, you know, this is slope, right? M slope is a dy with dx. When x equals x, right? Then you say, okay, then you have to find the derivative. Otherwise, why you have to find the derivative? Okay, then the derivative, okay, dy over dx is going to be 2x e to the negative x and the minus x squared e to the negative x. Did you get that? <laughs> All right, then this should be zero, right? Because it says that this is going to be zero. So that's going to be zero. You have to find this x. You find a zero, you solve that, then when you solve that, be careful, don't just delete the x, okay? You take the common factor out, the factor is first, okay? Then you, x e to the x should be factored out, two minus x, okay? How many solutions again get? x equals zero, and the two minus, so you get two solutions, right? So, so the first one, y equals zero, because when x equals zero, y is zero. The second one is two square e to the negative two. So it's four e to the negative two. So you're getting two points. At those two points, yeah, the tangent line is horizontal. Just why? Because the slope is zero, okay? So it's very clear, okay? Two points, there are two points. Right, zero and zero, another point is in two, four units. So remember that the space, yeah, the exam paper is not a square space. You have to give a complete ideas, okay, when you show your work, okay? And you have to change the, change the, the way you think, you know. You're not trying to find answer. You're trying to show instruct your ideas to find answers, <laughs> okay? That's more important. Okay, elementary school, yes, you just need to find out, okay? The teachers probably don't, don't want to see, they're too busy, don't want to see your solutions, how to get answers, that's what it is, you know? I kids in school, I noted that. They just only write on answers, they don't want to show the details, how to get answers. So this kind of training is eventually, yeah, if you don't change it and then you call it then, uh, and you can lose more credits if you cannot complete to get, yeah, if you cannot get the correct answer at the end. 
then it's a uh, yeah then you probably have to lose more credits okay so step one you have to show your ideas why you have to find the derivatives why because because the tangent line is horizontal if only for slope is zero if only for the slope is given by the derivatives of derivative of the function all right uh My my worry is still a lot, but uh, 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 convergence divergence are series. Okay, based on my grading on um, um, test two, there are still more than half of the students in the class have not fully understand uh, fully understood the, the the material chapter eleven. Okay, it's not just a matter of like, memorizing formulas. Uh, uh, and then you can solve the problems, okay? So this is a, this is a my. Do you have any other further questions? On this fun exam, how many power series problem series? But we have one power series, one series, another series, three. Four, okay, and also have to find the terraces. <laughs> question? Do you have a question? No? Power series representation, you don't need to find it by the definition. Definition means you have to find all the derivative, find the Taylor series, and prove that it's convergent to the right. It's a given one. You just use the already known results. Okay, so the not already known results is the first one is this, right? And this is convergent. I already mentioned that. The, se the most uh, important second one is is this. It's not a very uh, you in general. You know, it's going to be x to the n, n factorial. Okay. And uh, from the first one, you also have the have this. This is going to be negative n x to the n. I think. Yeah. Uh, you can differentiate and get get the first one, or you can integrate, you can get the second, okay? So, yeah, if you differentiate both sides, and you get one over, negative one over, yeah, when you differentiate, what, do you ha what happens? Negative, right? Neg negative one over one minus six. And this side, when you differentiate, then you get n is gone, just x to the n minus one. But this is after you change this k is from zero x to the power k, right? Yeah, when k k is going to be n minus one. So this is a nothing but the first one. Okay. Remember, you can always uh, you can differentiate power series if the function is represented by power series. You can differentiate both sides. You can integrate both sides. Okay. So but if you uh, but if you memorize this is good, you know, uh, you can use that directly. You don't need to try to find it, okay? But essentially, you only have a two of them, and then then you have a sine cosine if you have a time if you have an extra memory. No <laughs> right? Yeah, you are still young, so you your brain is okay. You should memorize it more. Right? Uh, okay. So, just look what, like what I did before, right? And uh, I use the first power series uh, to find the power series representation for another function. And uh, the exam, right, on test two, right, I give you log x, right? Yeah. Then you use a log function to find a terra series. The idea is very similar, you know, 
yeah, uh, uh, you just modify it. Just modify the function. Let me give you. Yeah, let me give you an h log of, you know, 2 plus x. Okay. Now, clearly, this function is defined for x squared and 2, right? Negative 2. Yeah, this is a defined for x greater than negative 2. Okay, so find the, find the, the power series representation for uh, at, uh, I can choose any number. Okay, I can choose 1, can choose 2, can choose negative 1, and I can choose 3, for example. Right? <clears throat> I'm not going to use a, you know, maybe I change the power series to, to terra series, for example. Yeah. Because if once you find power series representation, you get terra series. But if I ask you to find terra series <sighs> at A equals 3, maybe you're trying to find the derivatives. <laughs> Right, they actually can just find the power series representation, and this must be the Terra series. Okay, uh, so the idea is just let W to be x minus 3. So then x equals W plus 3. Then the function is going to be 2 plus W plus 3 and natural log of 5 plus W. But, uh, Because it's eight, same as eight equals three. Okay, so we have to we have to use a formula, right? The formula, my formula is nature log one minus x. You know, is going to be negative, right? So I have to express five plus w in that form. Okay, how can I do that? So nature log of five plus w. You, you have to change 5 to 1. How do you do that? You take the 5 out. Then you separate them. This is 5 put aside. Right? The next step is you change to negative x. Negative, negative w over 5. Yes, this is my x. Then you apply the formula, you will get n, and this is x. Okay, then, okay, then you replace w by x minus 3. So let me continue finish that. So I have a negative sign. I have a 1 of n. Okay, so. And here, 5 n and negative 1 to the power n. W is x minus 3 and to the power n. So this is the power series representation. But we have to say that negative w over 5 should be less than 1. So w is less than 5. And x minus 3 should be less than 5. So the, the, the radius of convergence will be 5. OK. So, is it a convergent diagram and uh, prove it?
I, I, I will discuss two problems. Another one is 8n plus 9n over 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are, there are several of them like that. Okay, you have to know how to deal with that. How to and yeah, how to figure it out. Okay, maybe I switch it. <laughs> okay. I give you one minute and you try to write down the answer for each of them. The first one from left. Come on, second one on right on top. So you say Only the last one that is correct. All right. The first one on the left is obvious. It's divergent. Yeah, this is a divergent. That's convergent. This is a convergent. Okay. Why it's a convergent, a divergent? You see, 10 to the nth power it grows much, much faster than 9 to the nth power. So the numerator, there's this term, this term, okay? So let's take a look at the first one, right? Okay, so this term, if you want, yeah, this term, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this term, We're not, we're not good, yeah. Does not approach zero, okay. Does not approach zero. But I have to, if we, if, then I have to use a great, you know, this great thing, right, estimate. So, what I should do? I change it 8n to 9n, is that okay? Right? I make the denominator larger than so the fraction small. Then this will be twice of this, right? Right? So that would be one half mm -hmm. times 10 over 9 to the nth power, right? That goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. So could we not use the root test for this? The so root test does not work. Uh, maybe. I will show you, yeah. But it's not easy to find the limit, I just say. Okay. So this so this series, I should say this series is divergent by 
the instant test for divergence. Okay. Now, she says, can you try load test? Maybe. Okay. So let's try load test. So where's my end? And it's gone. <laughs> All right. No problem. Man. Okay. Now, question is, how do you get rid of uh, in throat, right? So the numerator is no problem, it's 10. The denominator, you cannot create your own rules to simplify it. That's key point. So what I'm going to do is either you take the 8n out or the 9n out, 9 to the power n. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take uh, 9 to the n part, okay? So that will be 8 over 9 to the power n plus 1. So I'm going to get nine of uh, ten over nine. You still have to figure out this. This limit goes to one, but how do you know that, right? So, uh, so here's a fact. The fact is, the limit uh, n root of one plus r to the n. Is always equal one if r absolute i is less than equal than less than one. Okay, but this is not easy to memorize. So you have to prove it. And here i is nine or eight over nine. I did that before in a, one of the review classes. I show you how to do that. One plus r to the n, because uh, you know because this is going to be less than equal to uh, yeah. Why have the if you don't use absolute value, then i can be one. But let's try this, right? It's going to be because absolute i is less than one, so it's going to be. Uh, yeah, let me assume i is positive. I'm make it easier my computation. Okay, so if r is any number less than one greater than zero, that's fine. Then this is going to be one plus one, which is two, and that's going to be one, right? So. Right? And this approach is one, that approach is one, then forces the middle one approach is one. Okay, so if you look at my uh, lecture notes, you will see this over there. Okay, so yes, it works. Okay, but the problem is, the problem is that something even get to this point, then says the limit is zero. <laughs> because you say, oh, that's bigger in a, in a denominator, right? That's a trouble. If you claim that because here's a thing that fixed the number, and then if if you believe the denominator getting large and large, then then the limit is zero. The zero then your conclusion is what by the ratio test this is convergent. Okay, so that's the yeah. There are, even all the way to this point, still get the wrong conclusion because you cannot find the right limit. Okay, now how about how about the other one? XNF. And that is, uh, uh, if you look at, if you look at this, and clearly it's convergent. The reason is, even you can find the sum, because 8 over 10 to the power n, uh, and the 9 over 10 to the power n, right? So each of them is less than 1. Okay? So if I start from, what well, I start, if I start from uh, 1, then I can even find the sum of that. The sum is 8 over 10, 1 minus 8 over 10, plus 9 over 10, 1 minus 9 over 10. I even can give you the sum. Not only convergent, I can give, yeah. So that's going to be the first number, uh, 4. The second number, 9. So it's going to be 13. <laughs> exact value. So you get the value. Okay, but if you don't want to find the uh, find it, that's okay. Uh, you can look at a n. Again, this is a you have to do estimate. It's going to be nine to the nine, right, right, and that's twice nine over ten to the power n. And then you, you compare with the geometric series, and it's convergent. Okay, yeah, because b n sigma b n is convergent. 
So therefore, yeah, therefore, a sigma n is convergent. Okay, so you can show that this is a convergent uh, because it's geometric series. Okay, so this implies n start from one to infinity. This is a convergent by the comparison test. Okay. Since everybody claims last one is converging, I know, I guess you know how to prove it. I'm not going to discuss that. All right. Uh, pay attention to this problem. I hope you will not lose 12 points on the final. Okay. So remember, when you claim something is converging, some is diverging, you have to clearly state the name of the test. Okay? You cannot say by test for diverging, by test for converging. There's no such thing there. We don't have any name of such test. Okay? So I, when I was uh, grading the test, I see something just converging by test for divergence. <laughs> Divergent by test for <laughs> divergence. <laughs> that's a that's a ridiculous. Okay, there's no such thing there. Okay, and then you cannot use alternate and serial test to prove divergence. Repeat again, right? So recall the detail, uh, you know, the statement of, of each test. Okay, I already summarized that in my second review class. Let's go through again, right? You have an instant test for divergence. We use that here. You can only use the full divergence. If the limit of n is zero, then you cannot use it, right? Then second, the integral test, okay? Integral test to, you know, use the integral, but you have to verify three conditions. Oh, by the way, that was uh, when students use uh, to prove the integral, uh, use the integral test. Actually, uh, more precisely, you cannot use the integral test. Uh, I forgot the test problem. Do you have a test here? Uh, yeah, the reason is, yeah, let me discuss that particular problem. Okay, here. There's, there's three students using integral test. I didn't take points off. But this isn't, you cannot use the integral test. You maybe have to have another version of integral test. Why? Because, yes, you can integrate, right? So look at this. This is a B, uh, this is N. So N equals F of N. And F of X is going to be X. Right? Then, the, then you can evaluate, right? I'm pretty sure this is going to be infinity. Okay, you can use a, you can use a sub, substitution to prove that. Therefore, it is convergent. It is divergent. Okay, this implies is divergent by the by the integral test. The problem is you hey, you. you the problem is you, you haven't verified the conditions in the integral test. Okay, what the integral test says that f of x must be decreasing, right? Must be decreasing. But this is not decreasing function. <laughs> this is not decreasing function. This is the increasing function. If you draw the graph, okay, if you draw the graph, it goes like that. Increasing. Has a horizontal asymptotes. Have you heard about right? Take mass on 65. So it's an increasing function, it's not decreasing. When the limit is going to be what? X, right? And the fx, you know, the limit of, of this function is going to be one. It's getting 
you know, you're getting close, close to what? It's increasing, right? It's not decreasing at all. That's why if you did not use a, uh, if you did not use a, the uh, integrate, if you want to use the integral test, you have to verify uh, the condition. So we cannot use a integral test here for this, unless you modify the problem, okay? Unless you modify the problem, you can have another version of the integral test. If the function is increasing positive, then it must be divergent. That's it. You don't need to check whether the integral is divergent. Definitely, the integral must be divergent. That's actually the trivial case. Okay. So, so, uh, so you cannot use integral test for this particular problem. Okay. Uh, be, uh, don't be too late. You know, three thirty in lecture hall. I will send you the address. So trying to be there before three. Uh, uh, for three o'clock, and there are several, several uh, uh, classes of students will be there. So, so 165, 166, and I hope you guys can sit almost on the same side. Don't just spread all over the whole lecture. Hall, okay, so it's easy for me to give it. Test. There are some students from 165 also be there. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yeah, that's all my friends. I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Great talk.